Hello, my name is Marcus Peterson. I'm the vice chair of the Copyright Interest Group of the IP section of the California Lawyers Association and a copyright and trademark litigator at the Cooley Law Firm. Today, we're going to discuss a recent Ninth Circuit copyright decision that could have a significant impact on statutory damages awards. The case is Desire versus Mana Textiles, Inc. In this case, the plaintiff owned a copyright for a floral textile design that ended up in the hands of defendant Mana Textiles. Mana modified the design and sold it to three fabric manufacturers, who in turn sold clothing bearing the modified design to a separate retailer each. Plaintiffs sued all seven for willful copyright infringement. The court issued a pretrial order describing seven potential statutory damages awards, each grouping the defendants in various chains of distribution, with Mana at the head of each. The jury found for plaintiffs and awarded statutory damages against each defendant, in a total amount of $480,000, which exceeds, exceeds the statutory maximum of $150,000 for willful infringement of a single work. The Ninth Circuit majority found that there could only be one statutory damages award for a maximum of $150,000, where there was one work infringed and one infringer, here MANA, that was jointly and severally liable with each of the others through the various chains of distribution even though the others were not all jointly and severally liable with each other. The court found that a plain reading of the text of the Copyright Act and an analysis of the meaning of the word any in the statutory damages section means that if all infringers are jointly and severally liable with at least one common infringer, they should all be treated as one unit for statutory damages purposes. Judge Wardlaw wrote a 17-page dissent arguing that the majority decision is contrary to Ninth Circuit opinion, specifically the Columbia Pictures and Friedman cases, and creates perverse incentives for copyright litigation. She argued that the Ninth Circuit has ruled that when a single defendant was jointly and severally liable with other defendants who were not jointly and severally liable with each other, each counted as a separate act of infringement. Her textual analysis, including of the word any, comes to the opposite conclusion of the majority. Each act for which any defendants are jointly and severally liable counts as a separate infringement for which statutory damages are allowed. Finally, she argues that the majority opinion reads the Copyright Act as creating a trap for the unwary, and that if plaintiffs had filed five lawsuits, they would have been entitled to five awards. She argues that future litigants will not make the same mistake. So what's the takeaway? In the short term, we should await review of the decision, since plaintiff has suggested that it will seek en banc review. But if the decision is upheld, what does that mean for litigants? Judge Wardlaw's concern seems well-founded. Plaintiffs could end up filing separate lawsuits or simply avoid suing the linchpin defendant to avoid having statutory damages awards limited. They may also engage in forum shopping to avoid filing in a jurisdiction that reads the Copyright Act the same way as the majority here. On the other hand, defendants might work to consolidate cases brought in the same district or file motions to transfer venue to gather as many cases as possible into a single case to limit the possible statutory damages. There's also the potential risk of an unusual outcome in which a defendant is not dissuaded from infringing with multiple distribution chains because it would only be liable for one possible statutory damages award. Will the en banc panel address these issues? Stay tuned to find out. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like us on Facebook or subscribe on YouTube for more quick dates.